right, let's see if we can try this again. And see if I can get this to work. So. Hello, guys and gals, and welcome back to more Fishing Planet with me, Mr. Moose. Today, we are in the San Joaquin uh, Delta, and we're fishing for Striper today. I started this stream just a little while ago, and uh, it crashed out on me. So, hopefully it's working again. And we'll be able to get this going. And for those of you who are watching this on YouTube as a rebroadcast, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. The purpose of this video today is, um... Well, it's kind of to kill like three birds with one stone. Uh, I've been wanting to test out the live stream here on YouTube for a while now, so... Uh, that's what I'm doing today. Um, plus, people have been asking me for a Fishing Planet video. Um, and I've been steering away from it because of some things that have been going on. Uh, but at this point, I'm like, yeah, what the heck. We'll go ahead and do one. You guys can uh, enjoy the, the fishing. I'll do a live stream. It'll kill and knock a couple of birds out with one stone. The third bird that I need to kill is I need to... Just kind of show how bad the fishing is for me right now, um, because people just don't believe that I've been screwed with in this game, uh, to the point where I don't have the same advantages that everybody else in the game has. So. Sort of what this video is all about, and uh, if you were one of the folks who was on here earlier when I said all this, uh, I do apologize, you're going to hear it again, because... I want to have this in the video uh, so that people watching the video will understand what's going on as well. So uh, that's sort of where I'm at with this. So, anyways, I'll uh, I'll do my little speech again, and if you missed it the first time, you'll get to hear it. Uh, if you heard it the first time, you'll have to hear it again. So, anyways, all right. So let's get to the fishing here in California. A lot of you guys may remember I did a uh, video with um, the San Joaquin Delta before. And in the video, I said something to the effect of, I think you guys have been complaining online that we're up here just catching uniques one after the other, and that's just not true. And in the video, I fished around and didn't catch a, video, uh, a unique or anything else like that. Um, I really didn't try real hard to catch one, but I was trying to catch one. I wasn't fishing around a bunch of different lures. I was just using a standard spoon and going after it. And, uh, you know, just to do a video. Because, again, I don't like to do point and cast videos. I don't like to show secrets or tips or anything else like that. That would give you an unfair advantage over somebody else in the game. Um, it's just not me, you know. And, and I'm not going to do it. And uh, I'm not going to do that in the future. Um, regardless if they change the game or not. Uh, it's just not who I am. Uh, I believe everybody needs to get out here, find the fish on their own, and enjoy the game. Um, and if it takes you forever to find the fish, it takes you forever to find the fish. And that's been my whole take the whole time. However, uh, unbeknownst to me, I was wrong. I was sitting here telling you that everybody wasn't catching uniques and trophies one after the other because that was my belief. I believed I wasn't catching them, so everybody else wasn't. Because right before the patch, I was tearing them up. I was catching, on average, two uniques an hour. Uh, the rest were trophies. When I came into California to fish, I could catch, uh, using this green grass number three shad, I could catch trophies and uniques to an hour. Uh, this is a real life hour, not even game hour. I'm going to talk real life hours in this. Every hour I could come in here, fish, which, you know, an hour in game is 15 minutes of real life time. Anyways, I could come in here and I could fish and I could catch, on average, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to the game when we're talking. Um, I could catch, in real life, I could catch enough trophies and a couple of uniques that I would fill up my 220 pound fish net and be done and have to go empty it out and I was happy with that I was satisfied with that that was the way we had done it in closed beta and that's the way I expected to do it in 
in the rest of the game because once I got to level 20 I was happy I wasn't on a grind anymore once I got to 20 I was just up here to fish and have fun um, I'm not about only keeping uniques and fast forwarding time every time I need to, uh, to catch another unique I'm more about uh, keeping the trophies and uniques because it's money and gold and fishing out uh, an hour and then dumping them off and taking the XP and running with it and by doing that I was able to get about six to seven thousand XP um, in a real life hour I was pretty happy with that um, as you guys know in the higher levels it takes about 250,000 points to half a million all the way up to a million points to level up once you get up here um, for example 23 to 24 is a million points and so you need to catch the uniques and you need to catch the trophies to be able to level up at any sort of a significant rate. If you're only doing it on common fish and trophies, it will take you 10 years to get from 23 to 24, uh, fishing on an average of 8 to 12 hours a day. So, um, yeah, you, you've got to be catching the bigger fish, otherwise you're not leveling up. Alright, so anyways, what has happened to me and... A couple of others is basically while everybody else was catching uniques and trophies we weren't able to and you say well that just that's just you whine in or whatever no it's it's just the fact of the matter right now I'm using a grass green number three shad and I have fished um, just actively keeping track and watching I have fished 18 hours now without even so much as catching a unique um, I, I can't even tell you how many hours before that I fished but I've been keeping track of it now uh, since the other night uh, when I was told I absolutely couldn't be nerfed um, as an individual and in that time while I've been Sitting here catching common striper and trophy stripers, yes, I have not been able to catch a unique. Meanwhile, I've watched people come into this area, brand new, right off the bat, just stepping into the area, and they're catching, uh, on average, maybe three and a half hour. I watched a guy come in here um, Tuesday night. There was nobody in California fishing. There was just two people, me and 15 pound bass, or bass 15 pound. We were the only two in here fishing, and we weren't catching squat. Immediately after this one guy comes in, and we joked with him about how dead it was in California, how we couldn't catch anything, uh, he wasn't in here five minutes and caught a unique, 30 pound unique. And within the next 30 minutes, he proceeded to catch three more. But guys, I don't know about you, but if you fished up here for four hours, casting at the same times as everybody else using the exact same color lures that everybody else is using and you're not catching them you start to get a little frustrated well my frustration has been going on for about two weeks now this all started back a couple of weeks ago and if you've been playing the game for a while you know when florida was nerfed and i hate to use the word nerf but okay nerf Everybody got to be sharing all the information about where the uniques were, and they nerfed it. The slow down gameplay. That's fine. At that time, myself, Bass 15 Pound, Cody, we were the only three people in California. That was it. I was way ahead of everybody on the leaderboards. Y'all all know that. And the bitching and the moaning began in the... Uh, um, the bitching and the moaning began in the Steam forums and about me being so high far ahead and Bass 15 Pound Cody being so far up ahead of everybody else and the fact that we had the opportunity to get more gold and all this other stuff. All that began. The day they patched California, that's when all of a sudden I couldn't catch fish anymore. And when I say I couldn't catch fish anymore, Right after they patched California, I went from catching six to seven thousand XP an hour to struggling to get nine hundred XP an hour. Um, there was actually a spurt in there where we went 
five hours without catching a fish. Um, said something to the developers of the game, and they said, oh, no, we didn't do anything to you guys. No, we didn't even touch California. Nothing's been done at all to California. Nothing's been done to you guys. Well, it came abundantly clear that that was untrue. Um, because people started showing up to California, they started catching fish, and we weren't catching fish. So this has been going on for a couple of weeks now. And if you guys are just joining the stream, welcome. Um, I'm telling a little story that's going to be in the video later on. So uh, if you're just picking up in midstream, I do apologize. Uh, you just had to watch the video to get the rest of the story. But anyways, welcome. Uh, Robert, it's great to have you, man. I uh, appreciate you watching. So anyways, um, getting back to the little story. So as people started showing up into California, it started becoming pretty clear that other people were catching fish and we weren't. And so we started saying things to people about it and they were, again, we got the whole story. Oh no, there's no way in the game where we can, we can do anything to you. So then it's become, well, maybe there's a glitch. Why don't you test out this and see if there's a glitch here? Test out this, test out that. So that's what we've been doing. We've been trying to figure out why everybody else is catching fish and we're not. And um, I mean, it's become a joke, you know? And I was sitting here telling people, look, we're not catching all these uniques. We're not catching all these uniques. Y'all need to stop bitching and moaning in the forums about it. Well, well, when all of a sudden I went from getting you know, being able to fish for 12 hours a day and get 80,000 points, and I was barely struggling to get 20,000 points, and then this guy blows past me on the leaderboard, getting 110, 120 points a day, it was like, where is he getting this? Where is he able to get these points from? Is he sitting in Florida, fishing in Florida? Because he's sure not doing it in California. It turns out he was. He was up here getting 60, 70, 80, 90 uniques a day. At a thousand points apiece, it was easy for him to uh, to go. So when that became clear, it really got frustrating to me because, and I stopped playing. I just completely stopped. And you guys have been asking me for videos and wanting me to do videos. I wasn't gonna come in here and play. Um, it's bad enough that you get nerfed, and I understand. I feel y'all's pain. The people who are leveling up through North Carolina and Colorado and Florida and I and I understand they've slowed the game way down. I understand the reasoning behind slowing the game down. I don't necessarily agree with it because I think it does more damage to the game by slowing everybody down than it would have done just to let everybody get up to California and fish California and then make some game changes and say moving forward this is how things are going to be. Which is personally my opinion, you know. Uh, let everybody get up to 23, explain to them that, look, okay, you guys leveled up a lot faster than we thought you guys should have. Um, there's no in-game content right now because we're working on the next map. We'll have it done in a, uh, in a, in a few weeks. Meanwhile, y'all fish up here and do whatever. You're level capped at 23. You can't go any further than 23. And I think you guys would have understood that. Being as it's a game that's in beta and they're working to, uh, to better the game and this is the building block of the game um, once this is is correct and the bugs are all worked out of it then it goes from there um, so yeah I stopped playing for a while just because they had nerfed it. it it feels like I've been nerfed it feels like the three people who got to Colorado uh, to California ahead of everybody else in the game purposely got nerfed to slow us down so everybody else in the game could catch up with us and um, and that's fine if that's what happened just tell me I will understand I mean at one point I was asked if I wanted to pull myself off the leaderboard so that would stop all the crying and I said no because I hadn't done anything wrong and I didn't want to be pulled off the leaderboard because then it would make me look like I did something wrong so, but if you're gonna if you're gonna nerf me to where I can't catch any fish, okay, then um, then that's fine. Uh, Josh M, do you think they should have? Hang on a second, I gotta 
adjust the screen a little bit so I can read what you said. Uh, Josh Young, do you think they should have waited a little longer to release for early beta? Yes, I absolutely do. And I, there's a couple of things I wish they had have done before going into early beta. But cat's out of the bag, and, and it is what it is. First thing is they they didn't communicate with the people coming into this game what their their purpose of this game is. The purpose is for this to be a hardcore fishing simulator. And their expectations were that people would come into the game and treat it as such, and that you wouldn't tell everybody and their brother exactly where, when, and how to catch fish. They really did expect people to come in and find the fish on their own. Is that a bit of naivety? Absolutely. Um, given what's going on today. Because I, I'll be honest with you. Before this game was released, in the weeks leading up to it, I had planned on and had said in my farm sim videos, look, as soon as Fish and Planet comes out, I'm going to do um, some Let's Plays, and I'll basically record my leveling up, and you guys can watch me level up. About a week before the game came out, um, it was said by the devs that they didn't want any point and cast videos, they didn't want people showing anybody how to fish, and such and such and that and that was said in the closed beta and I said oh well apparently I'm not going to be able to do those videos because that would violate what they want um, so I I adhered to that and I have ever since um, I'm like one of four people that adhered to that uh, everybody else just kind of went and did their thing so um, that's the way it is uh, hello Kevin how are you man serious gamer welcome uh, let's see. Anyways, so um, that's kind of kind of where I'm at with this. Is um, I don't I don't think they should have released that. And at the same time, I think they should have had more achievements. Um, and they probably should have had the tournaments ready to go when they went into um, too early early beta. That would have given people things to do to keep them appeased um, while they worked on getting more maps into it. So, But hindsight's 2020, right? Um, they learned a lot in this early beta. Now, my only other gripe with them, and if they watch this video and hear this, and I've said it in the forums already, they need to be much more transparent with the, with the community. The game as it is, is not a survivable game um, as far as tournaments go and, and the expectation of people being able to fish competitively in this game. As long as people are able to share fishing spots, tell lure, selection, time of day, things of that nature, this game is not survivable as it is as a competitive mode. Now, I've been told there are solutions to that being developed. The solution I'm told that is being developed is uh, tying the fish, lure selection, time of day, all of that to the player and making it unique to each individual player. Um, and if that is what actually happens, then that will solve the problem. That will allow YouTubers to do YouTube, that will allow streamers to stream, and that will allow people to do whatever they want in the game. It won't matter. It won't affect my play. It won't affect your play. It won't give anybody an unfair advantage. Um, and it will certainly make the game competitive because those who spend the time look all these people who are yelling out and screaming exactly where all the trophies and uniques are the reason they know about them is because somebody else put the time in to find them in the first place um, and those people who put the time in and find the fish are the ones that should be rewarded for their effort by winning the tournaments and such not the guy who was spoon-fed the information uh, watching a video on YouTube. Because at that point, you're leaving the person winning the tournament down to a random number generator assigning weight values on a fish. So if they do that and they put that in, uh, that's certainly going to help. Um, I don't like it tied to the individual, but it's going to be the best solution for them in the game. Um random spawn points just isn't realistic so tying it tying it to the individual is going to be the best solution for it uh, they're going to put a more lures in 
so there'll be more lure selection opportunities which is going to make it that much more difficult for people to find it's going to make a lot of people bitch and moan when they can't find fish uh, and when no one can help them out but that's just the way it is um, and those who were spoon fed all the way up to level 20 and 21 and got to California by just asking where the fish were and when to fish they're gonna they're gonna really hate the next map um, the next map has some 20 fishing locations on it it's like 10 times the size of California uh, I don't know if you guys noticed it but when you leveled up the game starts out on a small area and progressively gets bigger and bigger as you go up and was working as a way to train you to find fish uh, in larger bodies of water so when you get up to the to the next map it's going to be it's going to be a shock at how big it is and how much fishing area there is and those who can't find fish are really going to hurt and struggle on that um, and that's just kind of how it is um, let's see tying everything to the individual players really smart idea I like that I also don't like though how you can only cast into one spot to catch a certain fish Josh, I'm going to tell you, that's not necessarily true. The problem is, is most everybody only knew of one spot to fish. That's what a lot of people don't realize. See, like, the people who stood around in Florida and bitched and moaned about how many uniques I was reeling in at one time didn't realize that I wasn't fishing one spot. They only knew of one spot, so they assumed I was casting into one spot and had an advantage over them somehow because I was able to catch like four to their one well the problem was I was fishing in a spot in Florida and I had at least eight different spots that I could cast to to catch a unique and I had fished it long enough to realize that there was a sequence in which I needed to fish to be able to catch those uniques but they didn't know that and they hadn't put the time into it so they really only felt like there was one spot to cast to catch a unique I'll be honest with you right now you can catch a unique anywhere within this area on this map anywhere from that green boathouse all the way around to that power pole you can catch a unique in here you just gotta work it are there some areas that are hotter spots than other ones absolutely and that's the truth in real life because fish don't sit anywhere on just anywhere in a lake they go to places where they're comfortable where there's food sources and when you do find a spot like that there's going to be a higher concentration of fish and you are going to catch more and more so you can be it can be a realistic that you can cast into the same spot and catch a fish time after time after time somebody was saying the other day that fish in a river are constantly moving no they're not Fish in a river, just because the river's moving, doesn't mean the fish is constantly moving. Fish are going to find a spot where they can put the least amount of effort out to stay in the same place. And so, that's the reason when you're combing a river and you're looking for fish, you're looking for things like stumps and limbs and things of that nature underground. Underwater, excuse me. Because that's where there's less resistance uh, in, the, in the water. That's where they have to put less effort out. So if they can get behind a tree stump that's submerged underwater, they're going to stay there because that's the easiest place for them to sit and still get fish. So, um, yeah, you're going to have areas that are higher concentrations of fish. But, yeah, casting into one spot just to catch fish, it's not necessarily true for this game. People think that because they've... Um, They've only been spoon-fed one spot to fish out of. The people who have fished these waters a lot know that's not true. They know that in Colorado, for example, when I leveled up in Colorado and everybody was screaming there was only one spot to cast, you cast straight out, 50 feet out, um, and you have to be at 12 noon to catch the fish. And that's the only place you can catch it. Guess what? there was four other spots you could catch fish and within those four other spots there were certain trigger points within that like if you were casting out at the big rock or whatever you want to say like if I was casting out where I just cast 
not only can I catch a fish in this general area, there are certain like trigger points where there were higher likelihoods of catching fish. So like at 110 or at 100 and you know 20 or 50 or 60, wherever you just have to figure those spots out. And those spots are based off of the topography of the lake. And the only way you're going to know that is by taking the time to fish those waters and find out where the the fall offs are. So, you know, like I'm not going to give away any big secret because everybody's figured it out now. At 120 feet out on this particular body of water, there is a lip and a ledge where the water falls off and gets very, very deep. Guess what? That's going to be a really great place for you to get an opportunity to catch a fish. Because that drop off is going to be where the deeper water is. And if you're fishing for striper, striper stay in deeper water and that's where you're going to find them. So, yeah, no secret that when I get in here to about 120, that's where I'm going to have a better chance of catching a fish. And if I spend less time looking over at the YouTube channel and more time actually paying attention to fishing, I probably could catch a fish. But. That's the problem with live streaming and trying to actually fish. That's very good news, Serious Gamer. I, uh... Yeah, I don't hate on that tractor so much. It's just there's a lot of negatives to it. Alright. Let me get this guy in here. Ah. Uh. God, if they don't fix the reels in this game. There's no way these reels, I don't know if y'all have noticed it, but even with the reel numbers the way they are, once you catch a fish, all the reels reel at the exact same speed, regardless of what reel you're using. And the, and the physics in this thing are so messed up it's not even funny. An 11 pound fish pulls exactly the same as a 24 pound fish. And that's just ludicrous. Not only that, an 11 pound fish pulls the exact same amount of tension as a relation to your drag, whether you're using a 5 pound drag or a 20 pound drag. For instance, the reel I'm using right now, and it's really not my choice of reel, I'm using it for test purposes because I was asked to test it. This particular reel has an 18 pound drag on it. Now I have 20 pound test line on it. In a real life application, I ought to be able to crank the drag on this thing all the way down and reel in any fish under 20 pounds. So an 11 pound striper shouldn't be any kind of fight at all for me. Yet in order to pull in a fish without breaking my line on this, I've got to have my drag all the way down to two and sometimes one setting Otherwise, I will break my line. This is a common, this is a common, just regular old striper, and yet I'm redlining on it. It's 11 pounds. I should be able to just manhandle this fish in at 11 pounds with 20 pound test and a 18 pound drag. And yet, I can't. I, I'm going to redline on it. This is actually going to end up being a trophy. Yep. Still, a 23 pound fish, if I switch reels and line capacity, if I go down to a 6 pound test line and I use a 5 pound drag reel, actually I think it's a 10 pound drag reel on that, uh, let's see, let's change over. If I come in here and I grab this attorney, which has a 7 pound drag on it, and I put it on here, and I put 6 pound test line on it. Now remember, I have I was only using two pound two settings of drag on the other one. I was only using basically if this was an actual reel, 30% drag. Okay, so I was using 30% drag. I'm gonna go to 50% drag on this. I'm gonna cast out and I'm gonna try to catch a fish. And the same fish is gonna react exactly the same way on this pole with this setup. Basically as it did on the other one, which is ridiculous. I shouldn't, it should be about the same fight. I mean, it should be a harder fight on this reel than the other one. The other one should have been much easier to reel the fish in. I shouldn't have had any red line issues. 
I shouldn't have run any risk of breaking the line with that particular fish. But the way the physics are in this game, it's just messed up. Hello, Mooncraft. Uh, glad to see you join in. Let's see, I missed it. I was reading the other channel instead of uh, watching the game. I'll catch it. It'll come in eventually. There we go. Alright, so I've got 50% drag on this fish. And look, I'm not even redlining. I'm able to reel it in there. I go redline now. I pump and get rid of the redline. Redline, pump. Pump it again. Pump it again. Just like I would in real life. But still, I'm redlining on a fish and I'm using a, a reel that has seven pounds of drag. And I'm using six pound test line on it and I'm able to put more drag actually into this than I was able to put on a heavier reel with heavier line. That is just so stupid. If I change, this is, well this is a lighter fish. All right, that's only a 10 pound fish. But still, on a trophy, I would have been able to reel the trophy in in the same way. It shouldn't be that way. If I if I was to catch that same fish, if I moved over and used the same setup I had before with the 18 pounds of drag and 20 pound test line on it, I would have gotten the same reaction on the tension bar, which is so wrong. So, it's... Uh, it's just crazy. Uh, Radical Gaming. Hope they add downriggers for the boats. You need to let them run, but walk before they run. Everybody's screaming about. I hope they add this. I hope they add that. I hope they da da blah 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 blah. Um, they have intentions to add everything. I mean, they have intentions to add boats, planes, um, cars, so you can take you and your friends to the thing. But it's gonna be a while. Uh, boats are three months away. They'll probably be introdu introduced when Texas comes along. Um, the next map is just a few weeks away. Uh, they're actually going to start some closed beta testing on it uh, in the next few days. So, uh, no, I do not catfish, so you will not see me do any catfishing. And there are no catfish in, in California. Um, which makes absolutely no sense. Because let me turn to my right. Y'all see that right there? It's a dam. Anybody ever been fishing in real life knows that there are catfish at the bottom of that dam. And why they're not in this game is... Yeah. Somebody didn't sink that one through, now did they? Uh, do I have any special connections? I, I actually talk to the devs usually once a day. Uh, or once every couple of days. And I'm in contact with them. So, um, there's a group of us that were in closed beta that we tend to talk to them every few days. Um, they're actually, if you get on TeamSpeak for the game and you hang out in TeamSpeak, you'll have a good chance to talk to the owner of the company as well as uh, some of the other devs because they do come in there quite a bit and uh, talk to everybody. Okay, this is going to be either a, probably a trophy now if this is a trophy and you'll see I don't hardly have any I mean I've got four bars five bars on this but I'm still able to fish this thing and I've got 50% drag on it that's what's wrong with this drag system if I was on that other rod I should be able to have like 80% or even 100% drag to lock that fish down and reel it in um, Using a smaller rod like this, I should only have about 50% of my drag on there. Um, because I'd run the risk of breaking the, the line if I didn't have my drag working as a drag. And that's the problem. They, they don't have the drag working as a clutch. They have it working as a break. Because if I had this set at 50%, if this fish were pulling away from me, then that fish would run and take line off of my reel. And when I felt like he was tired and I could make some headway on it, 
I could dial the drag up and I could pull him on in. Um, but it doesn't work that way in this game. If I dial it up, I'll break the line. Yeah, I don't use any... I don't use anything but rated right now in the game because it doesn't make any difference. The physics engine on it right now, they're having they're having problems with the physics engine. And that's one of the things they've been working on this whole time while uh, it's been in open beta is they've been working on trying to get the physics engine right. They're, and that's the reason crankbaits are at 33 in the store. It's so they're out of reach of anybody using because it has to have that physics engine has to be right for the crankbaits to work because they have to have the resistance right so that when you're pulling the crankbait through the water you'll have the proper resistance to make it work because if you think about a crankbait it's got a lip on the front of it that will make it dive and depending on what lip you have is the depth in which you you know dive it's got a number one it's going to come right underneath the surface if you got a number two it's going to drop down maybe three feet if you got a you know a four on it it's going to drop down and just bounce over the the, the bottom it's it's all got to have the physics right on it so it doesn't matter what you use right now whether it be braided or monofilament or fluoro the fish don't see it any differently um, so it doesn't even matter. So just use whatever you want to use right now in the game. I've used six pound braided religiously throughout the game and from day one because I did get the bass starter pack and uh, because I got the bass starter pack I got a rod, a reel, and a roll of six pound braided and that's all I needed the rest of the game. I hadn't changed since. Um, So anyways, so this is what fishing in California is like for me. Um, and as I said earlier, for those who didn't hear it, um, in the 18, 19 hours, <coughs> excuse me, hang on one second. In the past 18, 19 hours of fishing, that's real life fishing, uh, I've not caught a unique. I've been tracking it now for that long to make sure that I knew exactly how long it has been since I caught one. Uh, and meanwhile I'm watching people catch them um, all the time. But I can rock on some of these small ones. Now, and I want to say this in this video and I'm going to put it right out there the way they have the fishing right now with the striped bass and I'm and I can go by the striped bass because that's what I'm fishing at the way that I'm fishing right now what I'm putting up with right now the fact that I haven't caught a unique in 18 hours doesn't really bother me except for the fact that I'm not on the same playing field as everybody else in the game if I was on a level playing field with everyone else in the game, I would have no problem with the fact that I can't catch a unique. My problem is everybody else is catching uniques, Tony, Cody, and I aren't. And that's what is pissing me off right now and what has been driving me around away from the game. So um, that's basically where we're at. But as far as the fishing right now, if um, if I could catch the fish just like I'm catching right now and get a unique every hour or two hours of real life gameplay, I would be absolutely happy with the way they've got the game set right now. Um, I think it would be great because you can come out here, fish, you can catch something, which is all you want to do is you want to catch something. Now, I know everybody has that desire to catch a really big ass fish and land it and go in for a monster fight and that's cool and everything but if you're going for a simulator and you're going for it to be realistic in a sense then you're not going to catch a unique on every cast you're not going to catch uniques all the time but as long as you catch something um, that's all you really want something to keep it interesting and entertaining for you 
And when you do catch that one massive big fish, it's a surprise to you and makes the game that that much more exciting. Um, and I think that's where they, if they can get that balance right, and I think it'll be a, it'll it'll be great. Though don't get me wrong, I like the fishing the way it is right now. At least in my situation, I like the way it is. I like the pace of it as far as catching common fish and uh, and trophies, but. Uh, I would like the ability to be able to catch a unique once every couple of hours like everybody else is doing, but unfortunately I'm not able to. So. Uh, what's unique? A uh, Unique is a really bad word to use in this game, but they chose to basically have three sizes of fish. Um, small, medium, large. Small being your common fish, what I call common fish, which is the striped bass. Uh, for this, we're going to use striped bass for this example. Um, so that is your everyday common fish that you're going to catch nine times out of ten, or eight times out of ten, or whatever. Um, that's going to be the fish that you drag in. And in this case, they're about 10, 11 pounds. Then they have the trophy fish, which are what we'll use in small, medium, large. They're your medium fish. Those are those fish that are pretty big, and if you caught one in real life, you'd be like... Damn, look at this fish, you know, and uh, in this case, they're about 20 pounds or more and that would be that fish where you'd be Awesome fish love it great. The unique fish in this game is The really big lurker the the giant fish that everybody wants to catch but rarely ever do And and that would be what it is That's the terminology that everybody thinks of it in this game and um and the reward system in the game is set up to where if I catch this striped bass, I get some XP for it, I get a little bit of coin. If I catch the trophy striped bass, I get a little bit more XP and I get some better coin. And then if I catch the unique, I get the maximum amount of XP and I get a higher value of coin, I get gold for it. The problem is the terminology they used when they named the fish. They should have named the fish differently. They never should have used the word XP. They should have used something more like, you know, bass, bigger bass, big ass bass. You know, whatever you come up with, that would have been great. But by using the word unique, they made everybody think that this was supposed to be a rare fish. And that really wasn't the way they set it up. It's just, that's the fish that gets you the gold and gets you the higher XP value. The word unique was a poor choice of words for it because that made it seem like it was rare and special um, and is why so many people are confused and pissed off about them because people catch too many of them too often or whatever. Um, you're not going to get from 23 to 24 on this, rip, on this lake without catching uniques. It's just not possible. Uh, again, I talked about this earlier. If you only catch regular fish and trophies and you fish for 12 hours a day it will take you 10 years to get a million xp to get from 23 to 24. so it's not happening um the only way you're going to be able to do it if you if you're catching a unique uh, or two every hour of in-game uh, of real life play which is basically four hours in game because again, if you haven't figured it out, 50 min 15 minutes in game, um, or 15 minutes of real life time is one hour in game. So. Uh, Mr. Moose, what is the team speak? Uh, it's just fishingplanet.com. If you go into team speak and under the URL you put fishingplanet.com uh, and hit go, it's going to bring you to the fishing planet team speak. It will put you into the welcome room where a uh, moderator will have to uh, assign you speaking privileges so you can move around and go to the different rooms. Uh, and they've got different rooms, different language rooms for every lake. You can go in there and communicate and talk with people who are fishing. And uh, so that's where it's at. Uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Pippins, I like you because you're actually smart on the subject of fishing. You don't sound like a dumbass. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. Um, 
and I'm reading back the comments because this will go to my YouTube channel and they won't be able to see the actual comments in the YouTube channel so um, that's the reason I'm reading everybody's comments so people will know uh, Radical Gaming I live in Washington and catch salmon that would be very cool I've been salmon fishing once which is kind of fun we used uh, we did it on fly fishing uh, it was in a in a little bitty area that we fished in. It was pretty cool. We were actually elk hunting at the time. Hello, Jake. Welcome. This is actually my first uh, stream on uh, YouTube. Um, and as I said in the beginning of this video, this video is for basically it's me killing three birds with one stone. Uh, everybody had been asking me to do another fishing planet video and I hadn't been doing it because I was just sort of, sort of pissed off at where the game was um, and wasn't real happy with the way the three of us are being treated um, so I had stepped away from the game for a while because when everybody else is just when you're getting blown away on the on the leaderboard and if if you're in the game and you can see the leaderboard and you'll see that the top three people on the leaderboard have fallen completely by the wayside um, it's because they can't compete. They cannot catch the fish that everybody else is, is catching. And um, so it, it's, it really sucked. There was nothing I could do to keep up with the Viking and the Russians that were, were getting in there. And so I went from top of the leaderboard down to seventh overnight. And there was nothing I could do. And um, Tony's the same way. Cody's the same way. I mean... Tony's fallen down to like 80th. Cody's fallen down to like 30th. And there's nothing they can do. They have fished. They've tried their hardest to fish up here. And they can't do it. And we busted our ass to get to California. So we could fish up here and have fun. And we got here and we can't catch anything hardly. And, um, and I've done this. I need to fast forward time a little bit. Let's see. Let's go 3. Let's go to 4 o'clock and fish at four o'clock um if my game locks up i'll have to restart there we go and again i'm fishing the uh right now i'm fishing with the uh, number three shad with a, a half inch head and a four off hook which is just what everybody and their brother is fishing up here right now and they're reeling in uniques and i'm reeling in um striped bass and trophy bass for the most part or at least that's the way it was prior to this last update when they introduced a buttload of common fish back in. So once again, if you don't know what they did the other night, and uh, I know for a fact it was done, um, they basically introduced an, a buttload of common fish into California. And when I say common, I mean just the small striped bass. Um, to dilute the stock so that you are less likely to catch a unique. So um, the folks who are up here fishing, in addition to increasing the resistance on the fish, so it takes longer for you to do it. And then all of this is put into place so that it will take longer for you to grind out and slow down the pace of fishing so they can get the next map done and get the tournaments and everything in place. Um, and and fix the, the problems that are in the game so that's why all this is happening um, all right so we'll keep that what's my biggest bass um on here in real life on here uh like 42 43 pounds i think Let's see, we can go over here, and the biggest unique I have is a 43.9, is the biggest one I've caught. Biggest Chinook, or biggest salmon I've got is 36, carp was 19, yeah, so that's the biggest ones I had, and then the biggest unique largemouth I have was 12.3 pounds, so... Uh, but that's what I got so far, fish-wise. 
All right, back into the game. Oh, uh, let's fish over here. We haven't fished over towards this power pole in a while. Yeah, the carp fishing, you know, I'm not a carp fisher. I'll tell you that. The only reason I went carp fishing was to catch a carp so I could say I caught a carp. So I'd have one of every fish in in my uh, in my little uh, trophy chest, you know. That's it. I don't care about carp fishing and cat fishing. Those are the two things that just bore me to tears. Um, I'm just not into sitting there and waiting an hour to catch a fish or whatever the time limit is on them in game, you know. Maybe it's 10 minutes or 5 minutes or whatever. I'm just not into that. I, I like to actually be reeling, casting, reeling, casting. Um, one of the things that attracted to me this, to this game over the other fishing game that I used to be playing was the fact that you could use artificial lures and you could fish for a variety of fish. <coughs> Excuse me. And you wouldn't be sit there stuck fishing for carp and cat, you know, all day long. I'm not a carp fisher. I'm not from Europe. And I know Europeans think carp fishing is the end all of all fishing, apparently. But uh, it's not my cup of tea. I like to get on my boat, go out on the water, cruise around a little bit, and then uh, do my thing. Uh, let's see. Um, Brian, you're a cool YouTuber. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. As opposed to the guy earlier that said I was gay. Yeah. All right, so there's that 20 pound. And again, this is a trophy, 20 pounds. I caught it on 10 pound test with a seven pound drag reel set at 50% drag. So now we're gonna go back to the other reel. Just cause I'm proving a point here. And that's the reason I've been fishing with this stupid big reel. All right, so we're going back to the Hellos P. And look, Hellos 3000P, max drag, 19 pounds of drag. So if I put this into place, and then I come down here and I grab 20 pound test line, right? 20 pound braided line. I should be able to pull in a submarine with this. Well, not literally, but if your cow walked into the water, I should be able to hook him with it and lead him out of the water without very much of a problem. So we're going to cast out here, and I'm going to fish a little bit using this. There is no advantage. You don't even need this sized line at this point in the game. I will point that out to you. There is no fish in the game big enough to justify 20-pound test line. Um... But there is one advantage to it. If you want to keep your line, and a little fishing tip here, if you want to keep your lure right on the bottom, use 20 pound test, because the weight of the line combined with your lure is going to keep it hugging the bottom. And so you can just, you know, hop right across the bottom. Which is another thing that's kind of sort of unrealistic about these striper. Um, they have them right at the bottom down here, right? There's the fish. And I'm at 50% drag on it. So this is probably going to be a small one. Because if it was anything larger, I would already be in the red. And uh, I would be having unbelievable problems with it. It's actually letting me reel it in, which is surprising. Oh, there we go. And uh, fish escape because of high line tension. So basically, this is saying I ripped its jaw off. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> How stupid is that? Uh, Darren, uh, how did I not know about YouTube live streams? Have I been under a rock? No. Uh, you haven't. They just started doing them. Uh, they've had live streams. 
out for a couple of months now, but they just put out that YouTube gaming channel, and um, that's when they started, maybe this week, and um, that's when they started doing all of them, and, uh, and is the reason I'm doing it today, because I haven't done a YouTube live stream, and this is my first attempt at one. The thing I like about YouTube live streams versus using uh, Twitch, which I was doing a little bit of Twitch live stream and messing with it and was getting ready to really get involved with it. But after this has come out, if this does exactly what I think it's going to do, I'm never going back to Twitch. Because here's my problem with Twitch. If you're not a partnered member with Twitch, you do not have the ability to allow users to pick and choose what stream they want to watch your video in. So I have to dictate what what quality my stream goes out as as the as the streamer you don't have the ability on your end with YouTube I can put up as high a quality stream as I want to put up and then you can adjust it on your end and say well I don't have the uh, I don't have the bandwidth right now to watch in um, 1080p high definition so I'd rather watch it at 720 or 360 you have that ability or if you're watching on a mobile device you have the ability to adjust the stream however you want with twitch being unpartnered I wasn't able to do that I wasn't able to allow people to do that and um, which sucked because I couldn't put out a high quality stream I had to put out a low quality I had to find a happy medium and just put out a stream that other people could watch um, the other thing from a standpoint of a streamer goes um, when I finish up this stream today and I stop it it, YouTube is automatically going to um, process it and post it to my video library and I can choose to post that as a video on my YouTube channel for other people to watch um, and it won't have any problems having that rendered down twitch it was kinda iffy if your video was ever gonna be processed by YouTube uh, or you had to record it save it to your desktop or save it to your computer then re-render it and put it up yourself and there was just a whole lot of steps you had to do I don't have to do any of that now on YouTube I have the ability to uh, stream it and as soon as I'm done streaming it will put it up for me as soon as it's processed and, and ready to go so I'm kind of digging that that aspect of it because now I can stream something and have it immediately go to YouTube and I don't have to do anything other than say put it up live you know put it up so that's that's killer for me because that means I can do a stream it takes me an hour to do the stream and then I'm done with it I don't have to spend another 30 minutes of this and another hour of bandwidth uploading it to the uh, to YouTube where I had to do that before so it cuts down on the amount of bandwidth I use and uh, and then finally um, you know strictly from a monetary standpoint if I choose to monetize uh, my streams I can monetize my streams uh, where I couldn't do that over on uh, over on twitch and um, you know to each his own some people monetize some people don't um, but you should have that ability if you wanted it or not the only way you could monetize over on twitch was if you were partnered with them so Um, did I make videos of me fishing in real life? Probably not. Uh, because when I do fish in real life, I'm usually running a charter boat or something. And, um, I don't have, uh, damn it, there it goes again. Stupid low line tension. Oh, my reel won't keep up with the fish. And the only way I can keep up with the fish is if I spam the right click button. But if I spam the right click button, then everybody bitches that that's an exploit and I shouldn't be doing it. So, you just lose the fish. Um, but anyways, if there's a bunch of people on the boat that I'm running, I can't do that. Because then I have to get releases from all of them to put the video up. and Because uh, I do monetize stuff. Um... And when I do fish alone, I'm alone. I don't have anybody to do a camera. and I don't have the patience to set up a bunch of little uh, GoPros to film me fishing in real life. Uh, let's see. 
Darren says just sub to you last week. Love your videos of farm sim. They keep me entertained. Glad I can be of service, man. Um, that's what they're there for, is to keep everybody entertained. Uh, let's see, I think I saw Landy Kid stepped in. Hello, you Landy Kid. Alright, so we just reached the hour mark. And I think I'll just keep on fishing a little bit longer. I'm going to change baits now because obviously the grass green isn't doing it. I'm not catching any uniques on grass green, so we'll switch over. Now I should be in what is believed to be a prime time for catching uniques. Um, I'm not going to catch one, but it should be a prime time for catching uniques. All I'm really doing is accumulating my uh, <laughs> hours spent not catching uniques at this point. But the good news is, um, in the next couple of days, uh, they are going to move me over to a different server. And I'm going to do some beta testing and try to figure out why I'm not catching any fish. Which will be good. Sort of. Uh, let's see. Let me see if I can keep up with the chat here. Do. Uh, let's see. Radical Gamer, do you have your own charter? No, I don't have my own charter. I, uh, what I do is I, uh, if, um, if a boat goes out for more than 12 hours and needs a second captain on the boat, then they'll call me and I'll usually run that charter. Like if it's uh, somebody doing a, a two-day or three-day charter with somebody and they have to have a second captain, then they'll call me in and, uh, and I'll usually go run that boat with them. Uh, or if somebody gets sick, um, like if uh, somebody's captain gets really sick or injured or something like that and for some reason isn't going to be able to run their charter, uh, they'll call me and ask me to run. Um, it's one of those things where if you build up a reputation of being able to drive a boat, maintain a boat for a company, um, and um, you know what you're doing, uh, they'll trust you. And it, you, you've also got to be trustworthy too, because a captain's a captain's biggest asset is his is his numbers. And if somebody's going to ask you to come step on their boat and run their charter boat, if they're going to let you see their numbers, they got to be able to trust that you're not going to steal them and take them somewhere else. Um, so you have to build up a reputation of being trustworthy. Either that or you have to have your own book of numbers that you can have the confidence of saying, you know what, um, I can step on your boat and I can use my numbers and take people fishing. And, uh, and it doesn't matter whether you show me yours or not. Um, I'm sort of in both boats. So uh, I can run charters for anybody uh, down in this area. So um, there's a couple of companies that know that if they get in you know, a pinch, they can call me and I'll go run a charter for them. So... Uh, let's see. Hi, Yodi fanboy. Hello, uh, Brad Walters. Hi, Mr. Moose. Have you ever played Euro Truck? Is that ETC2 Euro Truck? I think that's what you're talking about. Euro Truck 2? Yeah, I play it all the time. Uh, looking forward to American Truck Simulator coming out soon as well. Is that right? ETC? Is it, Did you mean ETS? Uh, two, uh, instead of ETC2, uh, because uh, I'm thinking that's what you meant. If ETC is something else, I don't know. Um, hello, Landy Kid. How's it going? I guess it's going okay. I haven't caught a unique in in this video or any other series, so things are kind of the same. Uh, Euro prop. Where are the stripers? All you catch is fish. Well, that's what I am catching is stripers. Um, I just don't catch uniques. Um, Brett McKnight, if I did YouTube, I would let you fish with me. Oh, well, thanks, man. 
Um, uh, FSX. Yeah, I do a little FSX. Uh, I'm not good at it. I mess around with FSX a little bit. I uh, got a question on Farm Simulator. How long does it take for your crops to grow? Uh, gosh. Uh, all right, so I got to lessen my drag there or I'm going to lose it. I'm going to try to actually catch a fish now instead of just pulling out the, the hook out of your mouth. Which, again, on my other rod, com rod reel combination, I was able to put my drag up 50%. Now I'm using a bigger rod better line and yet I have to drop my drag down otherwise I'm gonna lose the fish and that's absolutely stupid for the littlest fish in the game <sighs> dumb 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 uh, look first time here going for trophies unique striped bass what should I use using the best casting rod reel? 30 pound braided line. Wow. Three inch black shad jig head. What should I change? That's funny. I'm reading in game chat. You should change that 30 pound braided line out. That's overkill. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brad, yeah, ETS, yeah, I do play Euro Truck. Uh, I've done some videos on Euro Truck. The problem is I'm, I'm having a problem finding some balance with everything else that I do, you know? Uh, I'd love to do some Euro Truck uh, once a week. I'd love to do Fishing Sim once a week, LSPDFR once a week, as well as stick with Farm Sim, because, you know, Farm Sim is my daily thing. I do it every single day, and, uh... Finding the balance of what I want to do with the other games is, is always a challenge. And finding the time to play the other games is a challenge. Um, FSX in Steam isn't much. It's only like 19 bucks. Um, a serious gamer asks how much does it cost in Steam. It's only like 19 bucks. And if you catch it when it's on sale, it's even dirt cheaper than that. I think in the summer sale, it was like down to 9 bucks. It was ridiculous how low they put it down. So... Um, yeah. oh, I apologize I'm not as focused on the fishing as I am reading y'all's comments so I make some stupid mistakes right here um, can you do some tips and tricks in the video farm simulator please um, yeah I guess uh, I think every video is basically a tip and a trick um, uh there's not that many tips to them. Um, the question was, how long does it take to grow your crops? It depends on what you're doing. If you're um, if you're playing the game normally, it's about 24 hours. Um, if you're playing the game uh, using Soul Mod like I'm using, it's four days uh, to to get to uh, to grow your crops. Um, but I'm using the Soul Mod. Because it cha it completely changes the game and it adds a lot more to it, so uh, which is pretty complicated. Uh, but the regular game, it's uh, a full growing cycle is like uh, somebody step up and tell Landy you might be able to say, but I think it's like 24 hours is what it takes. Uh, what's the question? Uh, radical gaming. Method of fishing by means of an angle. Fish hook. How do you answer the question? Forums and registration. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure. Alright, so there's a trophy. That's good. Um, I'm 
might get it along with the Scandinavian DLC. Does FSX work with Windows 10? I don't know. I'm on Windows 7. Uh, I'm assuming it will. Uh, from everything I've heard, um, if you're getting FSX through Steam, I'm pretty sure it will. Um, from everything I've heard, most games are running better on Windows 10. Though, uh, I don't know. Oh. Uh, Landy says he has no idea because he always fast times. Yeah, but when you fast time, Landy, it, it's usually 12, 24 hours, right? You're usually going from like 8 in the morning to 8 in the morning the second next day and your, and your crops are, are ready to harvest. Uh, Brad Walters, do you plan on doing a special video for 5,000 subs? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh... I wouldn't know what a special video would be. <laughs> Gosh, now I have to think about that. Uh, to be honest with you, this is all snuck up on me so fast. Uh, the whole fact that I'm close to 4,000 is killing me. Uh, I didn't think I'd be at 5,000 subs before Christmas time, even after Christmas time. Um, when I first started doing all this and Landy and I were talking and Recon and and the guys, they were like, oh yeah, you'll probably be up around, you know, three, four thousand subs, maybe by Christmas time, January, you know, maybe in that area. So the fact that it's happened so fast is, uh, it's, it's sort of overwhelming. I had no expectations of doing anything else like this. So, um. I haven't even given any thought to what to do for like 5,000 subs. Um, who knows? Something to think about. Um, Dakota Atwood, I was wondering because I recently got it and was trying to figure out how everything else works. Uh, I think we're talking about Farm Sim again, right? Uh, hang on, let me scroll back up so I can see what you were talking about, Dakota. Um, I can't scroll back up. Where can I just, there we go. Uh, question about Farm Simulator. Okay, yeah. Um, you recently got in trying to figure out how everything works. Yeah, it's like 12 hours. I think potato or 24 hours. I think potatoes and sugar beets take a little bit longer than that. Um, but on average, I think it's 24 hours for the growth cycle. So if you plant like at 3 in the afternoon, they're going to be harvested right around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Potatoes, though, tend to take longer as well as the sugar beets um, in Farm Sim as far as harvesting goes on that. So uh, that's where that's at. All right, let's go back to fishing here. Um, farm Sim doesn't, uh, Serious Gamer, well, Farm Sim doesn't keep scratching. So uh, I guess that's in reference to playing Farm Sim in uh, Windows 10. So I decided to leave the chat window open in this version uh, just so if you guys want to see what other players are catching while I'm fishing you can see um, which I have not seen anybody catch a unique um, which is odd uh, when I first came in here there was about three guys caught them back to back um, but since I've started streaming I have not seen a single person uh, catch one so
So I think I'll probably take this stream maybe another 15 minutes. Uh, maybe a little longer, I'm not sure. I'm sort of curious to get the stream done and then uh, and actually see what happens on the back side of it because again this is the first time I've streamed on YouTube and uh, just curious to see how long it's going to take it to render up and be available as a video uh, within my uh, my video manager so I can post that up for other, everybody who missed the stream to uh, to watch. Have I ever eaten wasabi? Every time I eat sushi. Love the stuff, actually. Getting a horseradish. Which basically they're the same thing. my controller <sighs> so just curious uh, most of you guys who found the stream today did you guys see like in your uh, subscriber window did you see the little red dot next to my name and that's what let you know I was streaming or did you just by chance happen to go my YouTube page and see that um, that I was streaming. I was just curious about that. Because I purposely didn't put up the little video. Um, that's another thing about streaming on Twitch. In order to, you know, my followers are on my followers are on YouTube. Well, in order to get people to go to Twitch, I had to record a video that said, hey, I'm streaming over here on Twitch, come to Twitch. And uh, so I had to record a video, post a video, and then start it. And uh, so kind of dig the fact that on YouTube, I don't have to do anything but just start broadcasting. And it automatically puts it up. So yeah. Uh, let's see, Longhorns Rocks. It was in my subscription area. Cool, man. Rad. I saw it in. We were streaming in my subs area. Rad. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, that's another good feature about it is uh, that it lets your subs automatically know, and uh, and that way they'll know when you're streaming. I just gotta figure out what the best time to stream is and when to stream for people. Now that hopefully my internet issues are solved. So serious, um, yeah, I just gotta get you into a chat one day and talk. But uh, what do you like about Twitch better than the YouTube? Um, what part of it do you like better? Because it, if it's quality wise, it may be the fact that I haven't adjusted my stream yet because um, I'm still I think I'm still streaming at uh, 2500 uh, K um, simply because I didn't change any of the settings from what I had on Twitch uh, and again I was forced to stream at 2500 K on Twitch because people couldn't change the stream quality uh, I could probably in the next stream up that now to about 4000 K uh, and get a much better stream out Yeah, apparently Unprop writes uh, YouTube streaming's gotten much better recently. Apparently, 
they totally revamped it uh, this past week, and they've put out the new beta, which is what we're using. And um, and I guess that's tied into the YouTube gaming channel, and um, so that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, I do like... I, that's the bonus of it is being all part of YouTube. It lets you know when I'm streaming versus me putting the video up. Streaming wise, it's a better app is what Serious Gamer says. Yeah, you know, um, from my standpoint, I don't really... I, I see a couple of issues that need to be worked on, but I think as far as it being in beta, I think the YouTube streaming app will just get better. Um, the issues that I see with it is you don't have the ability to put a bot in chat to uh, to take care of people like the little dude who was in here uh, basically spamming Bible quotes and calling me gay and everything else like that. Um, hopefully that will come. That was something Landy and I were talking about. So you do have to assign some moderators to the channel so they can take care of that. Um, but I think that will come. Um, the front side of it for me is that as a, you know, streamer, I think the ability to, you know, monetize if you want to monetize, I think that's good. Uh, let's see, serious, because now I have to touch 20 times to start typing. Oh. Oh, I can care less what anybody comes in here and says in the stream. Really. You think I, I mean, the, the shit I get in emails from people? Please. I mean, I, I just really, um, yeah. Yeah, seriously, you, you can assign mods uh, on YouTube, but you can't use a bot. You can't use like that whatever night bot is that you, uh, that you can use to kick anybody that starts doing stuff. Um, Here I am. Y'all, I'm fishing watching the YouTube stream on my second monitor more than I'm watching the fishing game. So if y'all are watching me just let people things Olay past, I I apologize because I'm I'm watching the stream more than I am watching the game. <laughs> Dakota asked, oh, where do you get your mods at, too? I forgot to ask for Farm Sim. Um, I typically stick with three websites, uh, fsuk.com, um, modhosters.com, and then I use uh, LS Mods 2015. I, I find that those three are reputable. You don't get viruses out of them. And that's, about the, that's about the only place I will go other than the rare occasion where I'll go to a modeler's website and get something, um, but I have to be really careful what links you click on because um, you have to watch it so you're not getting viruses or any kind of uh, malware or anything else like that attached to the mod. So this is the reason I like those three mod sites is because you pretty much can trust that the download links are going to give you just the download you're wanting and nothing else. So. Uh, and if you want to know where my mods are, if you go to, um, if you look in the description underneath all of my videos, you'll see a list, a link that will say um, mods I use. And there is a spreadsheet that opens up in a, uh, uh, a Google spreadsheet. 
and all of the mods that I use are in there as well as the links to them are listed in there as well so Um, actually, Landy Kid has a farm sim server, and we were just talking about today resetting it. Um, probably gonna put Colboro Park Farm on it. Um, and he may actually work on that tonight some, I think is what he was said. But, um, uh, that's probably going to, he's gonna have that server up, and when he opens that up to the public, uh, I'll probably be on there doing some stream, some, some work on it. Uh, but thanks for coming by, Brad. Wait, Landy says, <laughs> what does that mean, Landy? <laughs> does that mean shut up? Yeah, avoid serious rights sometimes at, on mod hosters when a mod links to uploaded.net. I get the mod and .exe of when I, uh, when I extract it, my antivirus says it's a virus. I avoid uploaded.net with a passion because you will, if you get that .exe, or that uh, if you accidentally click on that um, download manager that they have, you will get malware and um, avoid it with a passion. Um, what I typically do there, um, <laughs> um, if you get that with a, uh, if you get drawn over to uploaded.net, the best thing to do is copy the name of the file that they're wanting to give you to download and then do a Google search on it and find it somewhere else. I cannot stand that site. Uh, so, you, so 1080p looks good at the current stream settings I've got, which again, I'm I think I'm like at 2,500k is what I'm pushing out right now. I could go up higher. Uh, I could go to three or four, four k. Um, it just depends. See you, Brad. most part everything has stayed stable I've had a couple of I'm watching on my other monitor I've got the stream up and at the top it shows the stream health and for the most part it stayed in the green the entire time there's been a couple of times it's dropped into the yellow and that could be my quality internet service here um, acting up a little bit um, but otherwise it, it's done pretty good it doesn't you know um, I've watched OBS a little bit. OBS is, hasn't lost any frames, so it doesn't look like it's been anything on OBS's side either. It, it's probably my internet connection fluff there for a little bit. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've been having really bad problems with my internet provider, uh, and yesterday they came out and actually worked on uh, my internet for a while, and then they worked on it a bit this morning. Um, and in those periods of times, I was dropping connections left and right. So, 
Well, hopefully they have fixed the issue and I can have reliable internet back again. Um, so that, that little bit of a drop in it probably was my internet uh, having a hiccup. But it does, I mean, I've got it up and watching it as well and it, it does seem pretty good. So. Yeah, I did have one little, one little, uh, buffering there for a little bit. Uh, let's see, unprop, laugh out loud, American internet sucks. Yeah, well, American internet providers suck. Because they have a monopoly in every municipality, the way it is, you know? They, uh... Basically, they bid on a municipality, they get the contract for it, and then they're the only one there. So you either have to take it or leave it, and they know that, and so they really don't have to give you the customer service. Um, but yeah. My issue is, the community that I live in, the... Um, the infrastructure is wore out. Um, we get really harsh weather. We've been hit by several hurricanes here, uh, and they have not gone in and done the maintenance to the uh, to the system that they need to make. And so trunk lines are going out a lot, and the trunk line has to just become just totally deteriorated before they'll spend the money to upgrade it. And so they'd rather just tell the customer oh well it's uh it'll be it'll be resolved shortly and just kind of push it away and and patch the system per complaint instead of just fixing the underlying problem which is what was the situation of my point my issue they came out here several times um they came out here several times and looked at the system and said oh there's no problem because right now it's working fine then it would go right back out and I'd have to call them back again. And finally they decided there was an issue with the trunk line. And uh, that's what they ended up working on yesterday and today was working on it and getting it fixed. Uh, Colin, just explain to your provider you need a good connection if you were to ever catch a unique. Uh, actually, Colin, I can catch a unique on this connection. I can't catch a unique unless the developers go in and take the nerf off of me they've got on me. But apparently they can't get anybody there to admit that they've actually done it, so, yeah. It was suggested that maybe the reason I couldn't catch Uniques was because I was on Imperial settings. So here's what I have done in the last 18 to 20 hours of fishing. I have fished in metric. I've fished as a German. I've fished in Polish. I've fished in Russian. I have fished in every language setting in this game to try and figure out why people in metric German are catching more uniques than me. So I fished in all of those settings. Didn't catch a single unique. Um did the exact same things I was told to do to test nothing I haven't caught a single unique in the 18 hours that I've been keeping up with it now I'm telling you 18 hours uh, I'm here to tell you that before that I wasn't catching fish either and I just wasn't keeping up with it but I've been running a tally now um, and at the end of this will be 20 hours as uh, yeah I ain't catching a unique and the thing is is I know exactly where to cast to catch them I know what time to catch them I know what uh, what bait to use um, because you know people talk uh, not only that I mean all I got to do is leave my chat window up and half of the people who come in here will say hey where do I need to cast when do I need to cast where do I need to cast what do I need to use and somebody inevitably will tell them and so all I got to do is follow their lead. 
But guess what? They'll do it and they'll catch a unique and I won't. So, something's changed on my end that didn't change on everybody else's end. And I know y'all think I'm crying or whatever about it. I'm not really crying. I'm just admitting what the truth of the matter is. And this has been something that I've talked with the devs about. Um, they can't exactly figure out what's going on, but it is a problem that is unique to three players in the game. And it is the three players who got to California ahead of everybody else in the game. It's the three players that everybody was bitching about. And suddenly those three players can't catch fish anymore. So you do the, you draw the lines. It's not my imagination, I'll tell you that much. All right, so we got a fish on here. So they did go in yesterday in the patch. I guess most of you guys know this. They went in yesterday, and the patch yesterday did not increase the fight. A lot of people will say that. You'll, you'll, you'll read people say, oh, well, oh, they upped the fight. It takes longer to catch fish. Yes, it takes longer to catch fish. No, they didn't up the fight. All they did was they increased the resistance on the fish so that it takes you longer to catch a fish. The The actual pathing of the fish is exactly the same as it was before. Uh, they have not upped the fight. All they've done is up the resistance of the fish. I want them to up the fight. I want them to... I want them to take the resistance back down, but what I want them to do is make the fish actually fight. A striped bass is like a shark. Of fresh water it cruises around constantly moving looking for food and when he finds shad or something else like that usually you'll have two or three of them around each other and they will start attacking and if you're fishing on a on a rake or a river like this if you were in a boat you'd be cruising around looking for them to be boiling on top of the water you would see their bodies break in the water on the surface right about now in the day late in the afternoon and you would take uh, like a like a crankbait of some sort hurl that out there and fish it as fast as you could through them and they would tear it up they would knock the living well I won't say that they'd hit it hard and then you'd be in for a fight you would be in for a fight they wouldn't just come to the boat they would run they would spool your line if you were using the right tackle that they would be able to run on you they'll put up a fight and they'll run for a bit and then they'll turn and they'll come back to the boat and they might get halfway to the boat and they'll turn again and run from you and that's that's the way it should be in this game and it's not there um, they just don't have that set up properly now if you go do the salmon fishing up by the up by the the dam up here you go up there and you do some salmon fishing Occasionally, you're going to hook a good salmon that is going to run. Uh, the best fish I have have caught or fought in this game ran me 570. Uh, ran I had 570 like 74 foot of line on my rod. It took 574 foot and stood there on me. Um, best fight I had in the game. I lost it because it got to 574. I finessed it for about two three minutes trying to get where I could reel it in and then the line broke um, so I had to reset and go again now I haven't had another fish run me 570 feet but I've had them run me 225 300 400 feet on a salmon that's a fun fight and that's the way they need to make these uh, the striper the striper ought to they ought to start running you hook them you put a hook in their mouth they're either gonna run and lay down and then you're going to have to get them off the bottom or they're going to run and they're just going to run. And uh, there's none of this. I mean, right now you hook one and they either go, doi -de doi -de do I guess you got me. I'm coming over there to the dock. Or it's like reeling in a wet carpet. Either way, it's not, uh, it's not much of a fight. And hopefully, eventually, they'll fix it. And, you know, talking to developers like that, and there's a communications issue too because the developers are ukrainian 
So if you're trying to explain to them fishing in the United States, there is a communications barrier there because, you know, just didn't, lost in translation, right? I'm trying to explain the fight to them and say it needs the fight needs to be longer, it needs to be harder. And they hear it needs to be longer, so in their mind, all I need to do is adjust the resistance and make it where a fight takes three to seven minutes instead of taking, you know, one or two two minutes to reel them in. They don't understand that that's not, it's not a time number, it's the fight number. There needs to be a random, they need to have a hundred different fight scenarios. And then the random gener number generator assigns not only the weight of the fish to it, but it also assigns the fight scenario that you're going to go to. So, okay, well, you have a fish that's 11 pounds. It's going to get this fight scenario. It, it can choose from this 20 or 30 fight scenarios where it's either going to be a, a, a lazy fish and it's just going to swim right up to the dock or it's going to be a stamina, you know, rocket and it's going to take off and, and you're going to have to adjust your tension and um, and work the fish to get it to tire out and then reel it in. And they don't have that in the game. Everything has the same value to it. Everything works exactly the same. If they ever find that and get that into the game, it will be a much better game. Um, the way it is right now, the it's so disappointing. Everybody is on their... Everybody's like grinding their butt off to get to Cal California for these great big fish to fight and they get up here and it's some of the boris boringest fishing in the game because it's just all you're doing is hooking a fish and reeling it in hooking it and reeling it in and there's no there is no challenge to it um, and that's that's something that's missing from the game that hopefully they'll find uh, down the road Yeah, you know, uh, uh, let's see, unpro, uh, Euro prop. Best tip for beginners you did was spinning gold on the on the wheel and braided. I guess you meant the reel, yeah. Yeah, wasting your money. I mean, that's the thing is, most people get into this game and they they get they think they have to upgrade every time, you know every time a new reel comes available you don't and honestly the only line you need in this game is the six pound braided you don't need anything else in this game right now now as we get to next lake and more fish are added in and bigger fish are added you probably are yeah it just buffered on my uh, my end as well landy kid uh i don't know why i didn't now as far as my stream health goes I've got a green bar across the board, but um, as far as me, it buffered really hard on my end as well. And actually, on my screen, my video isn't even moving anymore. So. Which I'm going to, uh, I'm going to tab out. I'm going to refresh my browser real quick. All right, Serious Gamer is headed off. Got school tomorrow, man. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, appreciate you watching. And I'll try to do some more streams later on this week. Um, like I said, this was a test just to see how this was going to go. Landy and I got to talking about this yesterday or the day before. And we messed around with it a little bit. And both of us were looking for a reason to stream. He's going to start doing some streams on here probably as well. So... Um, so yeah, I was like, eh, everybody's been wanting a fishing planet video, so I might as well do a fishing planet video and a stream at the same time, so I really wasn't worried about how many people would come in as much as, I just want to see how it works, and it'll be a video as well for the channel, so, take it easy though, thank you so much for coming by, buddy, and thanks for all the, all the info you give me, um, as far as mods and things like that, I really do appreciate it, man. So, um, appreciate it a lot. So we'll go for about 15 more minutes. Uh, that'll give me two hours of stream time. 
and uh, and then we'll wrap this video up which is about right two hours is about one day fishing here on the, the lake if you do it properly look if you're wondering how these people are getting 91 uniques in a day I'm gonna tell you exactly how they're doing it what they're doing is they're coming in here they're they're catching one unique and as soon as they catch that one unique they're fast forward in 20 22 23 hours to the exact science or close to the exact same time frame the next day and that's the way they're fishing and that's what they're doing and I don't do that uh, I come in here and I fish a legitimate day now I may bust around some hours like I may fish from 8 till 10 8 till 11 and then fast forward to 4 in the afternoon because I know that the middle of the day is is crap for fishing um, but I don't sit here and farm one hour at a time. I just don't believe in that. Because I'm getting, you know, I'm releasing all of these small bass. I'm getting XP for each one of them. Uh, I'm getting the money off of the trophies. I have plenty of money. I mean, I'm not bragging, but I've lost $10,000 in fines alone in California. And I still have $54,000. Um, so I'm not hurting for the money. And I'm not worried about the gold. All I'm doing is fishing for XP. So, and like I said earlier, if I could have this level of fishing and still be able to get like a unique or two an hour, then I would be really happy with where this game is at. My only bitch right now is that three people who are playing this game aren't on the same playing field as everybody else who's in the game. And that's where my only complaint is with it. Have they done everything right as far as communicating with everybody um, and making all these nerfs and changes in the game? No. Um, but if they would communicate what they're doing better, I think the community would understand it. Um, and I think that's where they're falling the shortest in this game, is they're not communicating with the people in the community and saying, listen, we're making this change and this is the reason why. And I hope you guys understand that it's for the betterment of the game, and uh, just deal with us. We, you know, it's a, it's in beta. Uh, just, you know, uh, work with us, and we'll put out a great quality game at the end of the day. And I think if they tell people that, I think that that would be the best solution. But instead, they just come out with, "We're going to make these changes, and this is what we're doing," and uh, done. So. Uh, Colin writes, what do you think about adding legendary fish? Very rare random spawns and required techniques, not tackle, just to hook it, add a little mystique. I think that would be absolutely cool. I, again, I get away from the words, the words legendary, unique, all that other stuff. They, you know, that would, that would be what a unique fish is in my mind, Colin, is a, a fish that you hook once in a blue moon and you've got to have the right tackle the right time of day the right technique to catch that fish um, and maybe that'll come along the way when they get the bigger lakes in and they get boats in and they introduce sonar or fish finders I hate that word in the in the thing where they got sonar put up in the uh, up in the store we don't call them sonars we call them fish finders fish locators depth finders that's what they're called here if you walk into Bass Pro Shop or you go to Cabalas or you go to uh, West Marine there is not a section called sonar there is a section called depth finder or fish finders so um, but anyways when they start adding those into the game um, then I think you'll see that would be cool because then you could all of a sudden you could spot a big fish with your with your depth finder or your fish locator and you could see it and you could go, well, I'm going to fish for that thing. Well, then you're going to have to figure out how to catch that fish. What lure, what color, what technique, you know, it may be. And as they add more things into the game down the road, that might be possible. Because down the road, they're going to add the ability to make a Texas rig where you don't have that ability right now. I mean, it's so funny because we were having a, a meeting one day and we were talking about the worms in the game and... I made the comment of of uh, no person who fishes here in the states puts a four-inch worm on a uh, 
on a on a football jig head. They just don't do it. Which Tony's response was, no self-respecting fisher has a four-inch worm in his in his tackle box, which is true too, because you know you're not fishing with a four four-inch worm. You're fishing with a six or an eight-inch worm um, in real life. Um, but you don't fish with them on a jig head. You fish with them with a worm hook, and then you have a bullet sinker uh, that you put on that, and you can either fish it Texas rig, where the line goes through the sinker into the hook, and then the hook goes through the worm body and is hooked either weedless or, you know, hooked on through the body for weedless or not. Or you do a Carolina rig where you you put a, uh, you put a bead in between the weight and the... Uh, and the worm so that the weight sits on the bottom and the worm is jigged pre-floating behind that uh, a distance however you choose to do it you can also do the same thing with um, taking a toothpick and sticking a toothpick inside your bullet weight to uh, to pin it at a certain distance on the line but when they start adding things like that into the game I think it will make the opportunity to have uh, more legendary or unique fish that can only be caught with specific technique but um you know if they hold true to form if what they've told everybody in uh team speak as far as what their plans are as far as tying the fish and making the unique the fish unique to each player to whereas uh when you step onto this lake this window the chat window is the worst thing in the game right now because if I'm catching unique fish right here, everybody knows where I'm catching them, and all they got to—that cuts the amount of work they've got to do as far as finding fish. That cuts it down because they walk into the room and they go, "Up, oh, these guys are just catching regular fish. No need to fish here." Then they go, "Ford is the perfect example. You know, there's three great places to fish there, but only most people are fishing one third of that area because they walk in." And in the chat window, they see that that's where people are catching uniques, and that's the only place they need to focus their attention on. So um, if they fall through and they tie the fish unique to the player, it's going to open up a lot more of the game because um, you won't be able to tell anybody where to catch a fish anymore because it's going to be tied unique to you. And if that's what they do, uh, I think it's going to be great for the game. It's going to allow YouTubers to still do YouTube videos, streamers to stream. It will allow people to play the game and not give away secrets. Um, and that way, the people who can find the fish will be the ones who catch the fish. And the people who can't find the fish and don't want to put the time into finding the fish, those will be the ones that struggle. Um, and they won't be able to scream in chat, where, where, when, how do I catch a fish? They won't be able to do it. They'll, they'll have to, somebody will have to say, you got to find them on your own because the fish... The time, location, lure selection, all that is tied unique to you, the individual player. And by doing that, I think they make the game better. Um, and they'll be able, once they do that, they'll be able to bring back up the number of trophies and the number of uniques that you're able to catch. Uh, they can readjust and rebalance everything. So. All right, so I've got just a few more minutes, and uh, we'll start wrapping this thing up. Well, the thing is, Colin, is they're they're not gonna they're gonna get a system in place to eliminate the ability to share information before they go into the next map. Which is um, going to be where all the tr all the tournaments and everything are going to actually be located. Um, well, I say that, but they'll probably if they do once they get that in, they may move all the fish in Florida and all the other areas and change it around a little bit. Because again, like I said, what they're going to go towards is a uh, a system where it's all tied to the individual player. So the people who are going to regret it. Um, the sharing of information the people who are going to regret it are the people who Took the information and didn't take the time to learn how to fish in the game um, Those are the people who are going to who are going to struggle with it um, 
because you you can't do that in the and the and the tournaments be competitive with everybody sharing the information and that's what they're that's the reason they're slowed everybody down is so they can go and rebuild the system to where they can put a system in play that will allow everybody to play the game enjoy the game people can still stream but it still be competitive uh tournament wise so that's where they're going with it all right guys i'm going to go ahead and wrap up this stream appreciate you guys coming through i'm going to give you guys about 30 seconds to a minute and then i'm going to wrap it up but uh, I appreciate you guys coming out and watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. So that way you'll know the next time I do a live stream. And I'll try to do a couple of weeks. Um, appreciate it, though. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll leave it up for another minute or so, and then I'll take it down. All right, guys, just a few more minutes, and then I'm going to pull this thing down. So, again, thanks for watching. hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for coming by, Mooncraft. Appreciate it. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. Alright guys, I'm going to reel in this last cast and then I'm going to shut it down. If you missed any part of the of the broadcast uh, it should be up and available on YouTube here shortly uh, I'm not sure how long it will take it to render up two hours of a stream but uh, as soon as it is available to go live I will uh, repost it and it will be up so you guys can watch it from the beginning um, but I do appreciate you guys coming by and watching I hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll do it again maybe again in a couple of days maybe on Friday we'll do another stream so, again, thanks a lot for watching. That'll do it for this one. Uh, we'll see you around. Thanks, guys. <laughs>